Here's a video through the viewfinder of the Konica TCX SLR. I posted a couple other videos of this camera. I really like it. Kind of got me back into film photography uh, recently. Been shooting digital for some time. I did learn on, on film, black and white film, uh, over a decade ago and kind of lost my connection with it and kind of got it rejuvenated by uh, this camera. It's a little different than the Nikon F2S I learned photography on. And even, you know, a friend of mine had a Pentax K1000, you know, really common camera. And uh, later in, uh, you know, I think when my wife was in college, she was learning on a Vivitar camera that used K-Mal lenses. And all of these generally have used a light meter, which was, in, in a sense, either needle, a needle or LEDs of indicating of plus or minus exposure. And you would manually adjust your shutter speed and aperture, obviously, until you get it in, in the middle of the, the needle in the middle or the, the LEDs in a sense, you know, green for proper exposure. What's interesting about this Konica TCX, and I'm thinking, you know, this is probably the same for most of these Konica, if not all of these Konica SLRs, because they have this auto exposure functionality, which, you know, the Nikons and Pentaxes didn't, didn't back then at least. Uh, it, it basically has a meter that always tells you what the proper exposure is supposed to be based off, you know, your shutter speed. It will tell you the right f-stop or the, the you know the right aperture. In this case, you know, I'll, I'll turn it on right now for this particular scene and ISO 800 and shutter speed 160th of a second. What I currently have the camera set at, it says the right exposure is f2. If you change your shutter speed, go to a 30th, go to a 15th. Go back, go to 1 125th, it adjusts what the correct aperture is supposed to be. The camera's going to shoot at whatever aperture you pick. You can make, you know, more minute kind of exposure compensation adjustments by fiddling with the ISO dial, obviously. And uh, that that's kind of it. You know, it will, it will pick the aperture. If you manually select the aperture, and I'll put it, well, actually, sorry, it's actually right now. So that's the, that's the funny thing. The, you see off to the right corner, there's this little red thing sticking out. I will put it in auto exposure and it'll go away. You can see it pop out again. This is basically telling you, it's warning you, you've set the aperture yourself. So even though the camera says this is an F2 exposure to you know be a proper exposure, you're not actually going to expose for that necessarily. It's whatever the camera has set. In this case, you know I have it set to F8. So the photo would be super dark because it's you know, way, way too small of an aperture, not enough light. If you put it back in auto exposure, red thing goes away and it will shoot whatever it decides, you know, meter is correct. So it's kind of interesting because if you're shooting in manual, you know, you don't have this kind of telling you, well, it's plus or minus or it's a spot on exposure. It's telling you, well, you have to shoot at F2 to get the right exposure. So you would need to know, well, if I want to, you know, give more exposure, I'd have to shoot it. In this case, this lens only goes to 1.8, so that's, you know, you got very little more, so you'd have to drop your shutter speed. You know, if you wanted uh, to underexpose the shot, obviously you could go up to f2.8, f4, but it's kind of a different, it's, it's not complicated, and if you understand, you know, basics of exposure, you could figure it out, but it, I feel like it's uh, almost less intuitive or more complicated, and... I'm thinking maybe Konica did it this way because they expect their users to be using auto exposure because that was their fancy feature, but uh, I'm, I'm already used to it. I think it actually works pretty good and it's pretty smart. And to be honest, I'm actually using it in uh, auto exposure most of the time and just shutting, setting the aperture, or sorry, the shutter. So I'm basically shooting in shutter priority. Uh, it works great for me. I have a couple little kids and, you know, I never really shoot below 1 one twenty fifth when I'm chasing them around because they'll be blurry, sometimes faster aperture if possible, or uh, shutter speed rather. So it kind of works for me. And, you know, when the camera's metering and telling me, well, you know, I need a, I need to do a F, F4, F8, F5.6, something like that, and I want a shallower depth of field, I'll just bump the shutter speed up, you know, further than I really needed it just to get the thing back down. I theoretically could obviously just throw it in manual and set everything myself, but it's kind of nice to use auto exposure, and it's, and it's different. Uh, the screen, it's, the, the viewfinder itself is pretty good. I, I've read that it was a dark viewfinder, especially with lenses slower than 1.8. I don't really see that. Uh, I haven't played too much around with this, uh, this uh, 135 uh, 3.5 lens, so I, I will find out if that's the case. Uh, the current 1.8 on here, it's a 40 millimeter. There's a I have this 1.8 
50 millimeter and then the 57 1.2 so the lenses I do have are all faster aperture so obviously the, the viewfinder is brighter but uh, it's, it's a good viewfinder the split prism and micro prisms actually work great I've had uh, no problems at all I, I honestly feel like this viewfinder is better than my old F2S which I still have and uh, shot a, I shot a roll of HP5 through it uh, about a month ago and you know it's a nice camera it's just really big and heavy and uh, this this guy's really small light small as my X100S which was my fa like my favorite digital camera because it's just tiny and takes great shots uh, this thing's just about as small I feel like it might even be lighter super easy to use super discreet it's pretty quiet shutters not that loud and you know it just it just works and it was super cheap you know so I'm trying to I'm actually trying to pick up another one because one of them I have that I'm shooting through this right now was perfect for the most part that one you see out there in front of the viewfinder as I've said in the last couple of videos eh, the light meters toast so it, it actually wiggles around a little bit if you point the camera straight at a light with a battery in it but uh, it's obviously not metering correct so who knows what's wrong with the electronics in it so I'm trying to find another one but in either case, you know, if you see one for you know twenty bucks or less in great shape, light meter works. I would uh, highly recommend you pick one up. All right, thanks.